Welcome to the Hollywood Outsider, an award-winning weekly entertainment podcast. In this episode, we are having our 2024 movie release extravaganza. We're going to go over over 30 upcoming films, maybe even closer to 40. I don't know what the total number is going to be, but there's a lot of them. So let's get on with the show. My name is Aaron Peterson. Joining me today are my fellow hosts, Troy Heinrichs. What's up, everybody? Shaking the order up. John Davenport. Hey, buddy. Amanda Sink. Hello, hello. I'm here with my Taylor Swift cup of wine. What? Because Taylor Swift is from Britain? <laughs> what? what is going on? Oh, you have a Taylor know. Swift. Taylor Swift was so last year. We're, we're done with Taylor Swift. No, now. she's not. She's she done. has a whole other part of her tour this year. Didn't you see Travis holding her hand so that it was nice and warm when they left that cold ass Kansas City place? <laughs> she had oh. a custom jacket made for her, for him. So cute. Oh, boy, we just lost Adorbs. whoever was listening. We You're lost like, everybody. Taylor They're Swift like, I'm triggered. so tired of hearing about her. <laughs> I am too. Hey, remember, you can always find more information at thehollywoodoutsider.com. Join our Facebook group, The Hollywood Outsider. We're on X at Buy Popcorn. And uh, share your thoughts on this episode with email at feedback at thehollywoodoutsider.com. Look, there's a lot of episodes we've had uh, as of recent. Most importantly was our 2024 awards episode where we each went over the best in TV and film from last year. But now we are officially moving forward. This is 2024 we're looking at. Are you guys excited? This is always our most popular episode for whatever reason. I'm excited. I don't know why this is the most popular one. I would think the awards would be the most popular one. I think it's because people are wanting to know what they should look out for and not to toot our own horns, but we do a really good job of all of us finding different movies for people to tap into. We all have different genres that we tend to lean in towards. Now, don't get me wrong. We're going to have a full list of all of the big movies that everybody is going to be interested in seeing, but I think that it helps that we like to bring in our own tastes in mm. different perspectives. Mm. And I think that's why people also used to enjoy when we would give previews for the week of what movies were coming out, because then they would figure out, hey, what's on the horizon? Are you trying to like make a pimp for that to come back or something? Is that what you're doing right now? Kind of. I kind of miss it. Yeah, I kind of miss it a lot, too, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a, so it's an in memorium, Justin's yeah. upcoming attractions. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And we just celebrate it. I shouldn't say celebrate it. Ooh, that was terrible. Wow, Amanda. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> The sixth anniversary of the loss of our host, Justin McCumber. Apparently, Amanda I was going to say we celebrated his a life of recently. Yeah, because I was listening to episodes of him and I was laughing. So for me, it was like a celebration of his life, but I worded it so terribly. Yeah, apparently you were so I I was just <laughs> oh God, I, I was remembering bad. his legacy. Amanda's over there like mm-hmm. party. <laughs> no, no. I miss him correcting my grammar. I do. I miss him talking about your boobs on, a regu- on the regular. Yeah. You know what? He did do that a lot, too. It was very yep. weird. He did not miss throwing a bag of chips at your face for that <laughs> total disregard of his life. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I deserve it, honestly. Uh, okay, well, let's get into it because we're not going to waste time. There's a lot of movies to talk about. And. We're going to run through them when they come out. As of right now, now it's important to note, the schedules change. We've already had, since we planned the episode, there's already been like three movies that have changed their release dates. So it is very possible that some release dates will change. But this, these are the dates as they are slotted right now. Most of them will, will stay strong. One, Mickey 17, I think it was, got pulled off the schedule. I think they're holding it cl- for closer to Oscar season. So they must have a lot of faith in that one. Either that or Taylor Swift was uh, releasing 2024, her new album on that weekend, straight to movie theaters. <laughs> we got to stop with Taylor Swift. Like, what is it? <laughs> Can we make it a drinking game? Um, Troy I'm has ready. to do a shot every time Taylor Swift's name is made. Apparently, <laughs> you're now, what do you got? A, like a vat of wine? No, what no, no. Have- I, I very, I filled it up very little. It's only up to like here. Then what's the point of using that? Because that- it's a cute cup and I needed a cup. To put my wine in. I wasn't going to bring the bottle down here. Then I'd really look like an alcoholic. So, I so, was so, just hey, trying to have fun. We're not judging alcoholic. You do 
your be- you live your best life. Whatever you got to do. And if you're strong, yeah, I was just understand. trying to bring some energy because I'm tired and, <laughs> and I've been sick. The wine's going to help. Yeah. yeah. For those that are watching alone. the video portion of the podcast, because there doesn't, is it one, since it's an audio show, uh, Amanda poured a two knuckle pour into her cup. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. We're a few those inches. Those are like Hulk sized knuckle, knuckles, dude. They're, they're, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Two knuckle Amanda. I basically get like two and a half photo portraits of Taylor Swift to the is the fill line. Basically, okay, those are eight by ten photos of the AMC cups. All right, we're officially retiring Taylor Swift. Now we're moving on. Yes, we are to the first, the top fifteen most anticipated movies. We're going to start uh, at the bottom of that list. We're going to start at fifteen and go up because you don't want to start it with number one, right? No, no. So no. Uh, number fifteen. Most anticipated. This is basically taken. I, what I did was I went to multiple polls, right? There's tons of articles saying the most anticipated of the year and IMDb and things like that and co- carpooled them, <laughs> put them all together. Carpooled, and collated them? Voted. No, I didn't collate them. I carpooled them. I did it the way I said. All right. Don't judge me. Did it my way. It was cor- corrugated them. I did that too. I corrugated them. I corrugated them. You guys don't even know what you're saying. <laughs> sure don't. Nor are you saying the same uh-huh. words back to back. Who has been drinking here that isn't me? Aaron, okay? Aaron took an affinity vote of multiple sources and coincided them and collided them into a... <laughs> and corgied coagula- them because he used corgi. <laughs> I wanted to work, a dog. Dog. I wanted to work a dog in there somehow. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Number 15. These are right. the top 15 combined. Yes. There we go. From all of those lists. Number 15. A Quiet Place. Day one. Surprising. Woo-hoo. Starring Lupita Nyong'o. Joseph Quinn, Alex Wolf comes out June 28th, 2024, and hold your thoughts. With the thrilling exception of the second movie's opening scene, the action in A Quiet Place franchise has taken place after the superheroing, super deadly aliens have already invaded and destroyed society as we know it. As the title implies here, the third film in the series is going to show you the first days of that alien attack more in depth before anybody really knows what's going on or what to expect from these monsters, and that's what we're going to see. Now, Michael... Uh, Sarnowski, who's directing it, he did Nicholas's Nicholas Cage's Pig. If you did saw that film, so I am interested. Mm. What say you? I am a little. I'm not sure. I'm unsure. I'm unsure how I feel about this. Lupita makes me want to run for the movie theater immediately, mm-hmm. but not having Krasinski at the helm does make me go. Hmm. Hmm. I'm sure he was consulted though. I mean, I'm sure, but I just, I really enjoyed, I guess, his take on it. And I'm a little worried of how this is going to change because, you know, different people, different visions, different way of doing things. So. Look, I I love these movies just because of the concept of sound and how they use sound and silence in these particular films. So I'm curious how they're going to do a holy shit Cloverfield type movie in this particular day one event in that same manner. So I wonder if it's going to have the same kind of, I don't want to call it a gimmick, but the same kind of sound usage, or if it's going to be full on, no longer a quiet place because aliens are invading. It's going to be a loud place. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is going to be more of a survival or try to figure out how to survive and set up a way to survive. Like we saw in the first two movies, it'll be to a degree really interesting um i don't i don't want to put my own spin on whatever it is because so far it i've enjoyed both movies so i will be willing to give this a sit for sure and it's a test right it's a test from a franchise perspective because this is a point of view from people we have not seen yet in the franchise right okay i think uh four hands for uh, a quiet place day one Moving on to number 14, Argyle, which comes out really soon. It comes out February 2nd, 2024. Mm -hmm. Directed by Matthew Vaughn, starring Bryce Dallas Howard, Sam Rockwell, Henry Cavill, with the worst haircut he could find. John Cena, Dua Lipa, uh, Brian Cranston, and a bunch of other people. Kingsman director uh, Matthew Vaughn returns to the world of Cheeky Spies with his action comedy about a novelist who's played by Bryce Dallas Howard, who draws the attention of an underground crime syndicate when the plots of her espionage novels uncannily mirror their activities and then it's up to an undercover spy to save her and her cat and the spy is sam rockwell and i and i do like this i i saw this in an interview with matthew vaughn when he was talking about this particular film is you know in the in the trailer well two things one in the trailer everything you see in the trailer is only from the first 20 minutes of the movie 
That's great. So while, crazy. while you think you've seen everything, you actually haven't. And the second thing is, why would he cast Sam Rockwell as a spy? He said, because if you were really having a spy, you wouldn't have someone who stood out like Henry Cavill. They would look like Sam Rockwell. Mm. And that's either very smart or very offensive to Sam Rockwell. <laughs> <laughs> and very complimentary to Henry Cavill. Well, My goodness. We can all agree on that. <laughs> Fair. The movie I think about when I see Sam Rockwell in this role is the movie Mr. Right, where it's him and um, Anna Kendrick. Mm -hmm. And sure. he is he is a, a hitman and um, deciding to get out of the hitman game. But he is almost preternaturally gifted as a hitman. Um him in that movie, I like his charm. I like his quip. I like what he can do. In general, Sam Rockwell is a lot of fun on screen. So I'm excited to see what he does in this. And the cast is stellar. I mean, you're talking stellar. not only Henry Cavill and Sam Rockwell, but you also got, you know, John Cena is going to be here, Brian Cranston, Samuel Jackson, Catherine O'Hara, Ariana DeBose. So I, I think this is going to be fun. Yeah, me at Dua Lipa. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> I figured that the plot of it would have gotten you. It's, it, it seems sure. very reminiscent, uh, you know, to me at least, of the fun, modernized, and visually appealing Knives Out type of movie well, where we're going to have some mystery to it. Yes. To me, this is a, a modern romance in the stone is what it is. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I can see it's that. It's very, very similar. It's a spy version of romance in the stone, which I love that movie, so... And Matthew Vaughn, very rarely does he do wrong, but I didn't love all the Kingsman movies. So first one was very good. And then the second one was, you know, Dimension Returns. I'd agree Returns. with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, number 13. From the world of John Wick is Ballerina. Hell yeah. Directed, calm down. Directed by Len Wiseman, starring Anna de Armas. Uh, Keanu Reeves is in here somewhere. It takes place between John Wick 3 and John Wick 4. Lance Reddick is going to be in here. Norman Reedus is in this bad boy. And it opens hmm. on June 7th, oh, 2024. The first spinoff film of the John Wick universe stars Anna de Armas as one of the female assassins trained by the Rusca Roma, the criminal organization that was headed up by Angela Houston's director. And we saw in John Wick Chapter 4, Parabellum. Though we don't know much more about that. So what do you think about Ballerina? Why are you so excited, Amanda? Well, first of all, I love the John Wick world. I actually just got done with doing a rewatch of the movies one through three, mm. and I'm about to rewatch number four, which I can't wait to Yay. experience again. But I think it's the world that they've built. It's the choreography, you know, for the stunt coordination. It's the the visual aesthetic of just the entire the entire feeling that you get from watching these movies. And as long as I have that, I get a little Keanu and I get Ana de, de Armas. Okay, I'm sold. You do not need to tell me much more. And I remember, I think you and I talked briefly about it after we saw John Wick 4 at South by Southwest because we got a little bit of a insight into what could come down the pike for this. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like we were both interested in it. And Keanu seemed really excited about it. And he seems like such a genuine individual that I don't think that that was just marketing. I think he genuinely was. So I think with having his support behind the film, I'm in, you know? Well, I think he loves the world. He's just tired, <laughs> you know? And yeah, yeah, So exactly. now he can watch somebody else kick a little ass and it doesn't have to be him. Yeah, because it was supposed to originally end with five installments and then it seemed like that got changed. So that's how the Ballerina and Continental kind of came into the picture. Well, Chad Stahelski said that they wanted another one. They He decided not to do it. They put everything they wanted into the fourth one. That's why we didn't get that chapter four and five like they originally talked about. Anna Darmus, I mean, she's great. She can kick ass. I think this could be fun. All right. The energy felt like it got sucked out of the room. So we're going we're gonna to move on. Anything else on Ballerina before I move on? Can't wait. I'm in. <laughs> There's such dude responses. Oh my God. I can't yeah. wait. Yeah, I can't Robot. Wait. Yeah, I can't wait. Uh, this looks very Looking good. Looking forward. I cannot wait. Good. The Russians are part of this movie, so I will definitely <laughs> see this. Uh, where's Russian Space Station? Everybody in the Union just turned out. Uh-huh. <laughs> Maybe. Hey, before we move on to our next movie, though, I do want to mention Next Goal Wins, because Michael Fassbender stars in this very hilarious and heartwarming feel-good underdog comedy based on a true story by Academy Award-winning director and filmmaker Taika Waititi. You can score big by adding Next Goal Wins to your movie collection today. You can buy it now on digital. You can own it on Blu-ray February 27th. 
I saw this when it came out. It is a delightful film. It is it is fun. It's heartwarming, and it's covering an area of the world that hasn't gotten much coverage. So it's it's a very beautiful story that I think a lot of people will really enjoy. So check out Next Goal Wins as soon as you can. And if you want a chance to win a digital copy, you can email us contest at the Hollywood Outsider dot com. You sh- give us your name and share the show with friends <laughs> and we'll enter you into a drawing to win one of five digital copies. All right. That's contest at the Hollywood outsider.com. Next movie is alien Romulus <gasps> directed by Fede Alvarez. Oh my God. He did the evil dead remake. That was awesome. And don't breathe and don't breathe. But the evil yep. dead remake that was awesome. Yep. Both of them. Yeah. <sighs> It comes out on August 16th, 2024. Her, is, Isabella Merced, uh, Kaylee Spaney, and several other people that are newcomers to the world of acting. And the new film comes from Don't Breathe director Fede Alvarez, and will follow a group of young people in a distant world who find themselves in a confrontation with the most terrifying life form in the universe. And all I want to say, thank you. Sweet baby Jesus. <laughs> we, we don't have Sigourney Weaver. We don't have the uh-huh. Prometheus nonsense. Uh-huh. We mm-hmm. just have people terrified mm-hmm. of aliens. Thank you. That's what I want. I need a good alien movie. I need I need to get the taste of the alien covenant out of my mouth. I, I, this, is, this is good for me. I couldn't agree with you more on that because alien covenant was terrible. I'm I'm also I, I and I'm going to preface Terrible. this by saying I'm not a big alien franchise fan, okay? I'm not a big Ridley fan. I, I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for all of Did this. Did you say Ridley However, or Ripley? Ridley. No, it's Ripley. I meant director. Oh. Ridley Scott. Okay. Like, well, could, <laughs> hey. To be that's fair, fair. No, that's fair. To be fair. All right. Just clarifying. Okay. <laughs> no, that's fair. That's fair. I do like Ripley. Okay. I do. Um, but I'm not a fan of, you know, the one who basically brought this franchise around. <laughs> However, <laughs> Fide Alvarez being the director yeah. and knowing that it is intended to be a standalone film has me very interested for the first time, I think, between any of the Alien movies. The thing that only intrigues me about this movie, because I think Alien is tired and done with at this point personally but the romulus edition of this seems interesting because if you know anything about your roman mythology the story of remus and romulus were the twin brothers who were described as the founding city of rome so the question i have is where is this going to fall in the timeline given that we had prometheus and then we had alien versus predator and things of this nature is this the establishment of the alien colony on the planet that ripley comes to eventually Or is this an establishment of an alien human type hybrid with these small people that are being terrified? Like there's just a lot of like something is going Mm -hmm. to come out of this to be in the in the universe of a it's officially an empire officially not tied to any previous alien films. Right. But it's still aliens. It is still the it's just still the xenomorph. Sure. But they're not going to tie in a Prometheus or God covenant. Well, no, it's going to be its own directly. Yeah, not directly. I want no connection to either. I just I just want to let that go. Just be done with it. I never want to so see Danny saying- McBride in my alien movie ever again. <laughs> truly, truly. <God>. So <laughs> Keep terrible. him in comedies. Yeah. So if it has no connection at all, is this like a Kelvin timeline versus a prime timeline? I think you're overthinking oh, it. Oh, for God's yeah, sake. Yeah, there's not Destroyed. enough detail yeah, out here yet for us to be. It's an alien to- movie, dude. It's just like <laughs> we had Prey, you know, Predator showed up. It was like that. That was cool. That was yeah. cool. Yeah, that, that was, was a cool. really good one. That's all we need. We just need people showing up on a planet. Holy shit, there's aliens here. That's all we need. I don't need any Roman mythology ties to Ridley Scott's nonsense. None of that. I want an alien movie. I don't care about any of that nonsense. Which is a great tie-in to the next uh, topic. Yeah, speaking of directors that Amanda hates, Ridley Scott directed uh, Gladiator 2 because he's Mm. desperate to revisit Gladiator for some reason. Uh, Starring Paul Mescal, Denzel Washington's in here. Literally, that's your hook. That's how you get me to pay attention. Uh, right. Connie Nielsen and Joseph Quinn and a lot of other people. Uh, so Eddie from Stranger Things is really taken off. <laughs> He's in two movies that we've talked about already. Comes out mm-hmm. November 22nd, 2024. And Ridley Scott returns to direct the sequel uh, to the historical epic Gladiator. And the story is going to reportedly revolve around a grown-up Lucius, who's played by Paul Mescal, who has become emperor 
and we'll see the return of Connie Nielsen as Lucilia. Isn't Pedro tied to this project as well? Pedro Pascal? Yeah. Yes, he is in it. He is in it. Okay. He is... Um, it's a mystery role. It is a mystery role. So there you go. Anybody care about this at all? I got number 11 I most anticipated, and doesn't sound like any of us give a damn. No, I... I love Gladiator. I don't. I didn't need this movie. I, it was a perfectly good story, beginning to end. I don't understand why we're back at this. I got to be honest with you, man. Denzel Washington will probably get me to see it, but I, uh, like Amanda, have lost my love for Ridley Scott. He can shoot beautifully, but he hasn't made a movie I've actually enjoyed sitting through probably since the Prometheus. Yeah, I just don't Fair. care about him as a director. I don't think that he has the the spark in the tail. I think he's overrated, if I'm being perfectly Ooh. honest. Whoa. Shit. But you tell me Denzel and Pedro, and there is no place I would rather be <laughs> <laughs> than sitting in there and watching that. So to Aaron's point, yeah, you get that casting, and I am 100% at least willing to go. I'm not going to have high hopes for it, but I'm willing to you know go in open-minded. Fair point. It uh, could be good. It could be good. Well, all of these could be good, and they could all suck. That's a that's a pretty basic statement. Do you have yeah, this one? This one this one is a pure sequel, right? It's the it's the one the son or whatever that yeah, finds that yeah. he was Maximus' the son. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Well, number ten. We're in the top ten finally. Mickey seventeen, and that's from Boon Jun Ho, who directed Parasite. So he's an exciting director to watch. Robert Pattinson is starring in this. What? Tony Collette, Mark Ruffalo, Stephen Young. This was originally pulled, it was set for March 29th. They pulled it from March 29th. It's going to now, like I said earlier, debut a little later in the year. And this is uh, his follow-up to Parasite. It's a, the adapt adaptation of a sci-fi novel called Mickey 7 by Edward Ashton. And Robert pa Pattinson stars as a disposable employee, one whose body is regenerated with previous memories intact every time he dies on a mission to colonize a distant world. Troy, what about you? This sounds right up your alley. No, nah, it sounds okay. Wow. Piss off. John, sounds right up your alley. I, you know, you described that and I, yeah, it's right up my alley. I'm going to, I will give this definitely a shot. I'm, I'm a little worried because uh, Parasite, though I enjoyed the movie, I'm a little scared that it's going to be a little too, 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 I don't know. I, I guess the, what I'm worried about is it being too up in itself kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I want it to be. Like for especially if it's right up my alley like this, or at least sounds like it. At least I want it to be more fun and engaging than Parasite was. I love Parasite. I mean, it could have like um, an Event Horizon type feel, or it could have, you know, Cloverfield Part Three feel. I mean, it's 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 interesting how it could go, but cautiously optimistic. We'll put it that way. It just sounds like an intelligent original idea. That I haven't seen I mean, done. It's I mean, not original. It's adapted from a book. You know <laughs> God damn it. You know what I meant. <laughs> it's, it's original property then. How about that? Yeah. It's yeah. not a sequel. It's not a bitch. comic book. It's not. It's something from, from, way, from way out there. All right. Moving on to some love. Uh, Bob Marley, one love. Uh, Kingsley Benadir plays the Jamaican singer, Bob Marley, who became a global ambassador for reggae music, pissed off the powers that be with his rebel song, survived an assassination attempt, and helped to unite the political factions of his country. And he passed away young. I don't want to say how old he was, in case it's a spoiler for somebody that doesn't know much about Bob Marley, and is maybe one of a few human beings who can rightfully be called icons. And this movie comes out on Valentine's Day. February 14th, because nothing says love like Valentine's Day. I, I got to say, <laughs> this trailer's Bob been out for a while, and I was kind of getting sick of the trailer, but it doesn't mean I don't want to see the movie. I, I, I think Bob Marley is just an cap, a captivating personality, and I don't know much about his backstory. So I would love to see this, and I hope it's an amazing movie. Yeah, I'm with you. The trailer is something that, for me, has, has gotten a little tired, but... At the same time, once the trailer's on, I you know the song's playing and he's talking. Uh, I do kind of get that song stuck in my head for the rest of the day. Each time I see the trailer, I'm thinking about it. I'm being provoked. I think I will. I think I'll go ahead and, and watch it. 
This would be in my top five for certain for this year if it wasn't on the top 15 list. I oh. love Bob Marley. I've always loved Bob Marley. And I can't wait to see the movie itself. The trailer looks good. I'm really looking forward to it. I feel like weed sales are going to go through the roof. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. Island, Island time is a whole new concept going forward. <laughs> like Snoop Dogg has quit weed. I don't know. He has not quit weed. He was trying to he, sell solo he, stoves. Uh, <laughs> That's literally all it was. He is still I smoking he did, the weed. Though. No, that you was know? the ad. So he could sell solo uh, stoves because it's a smoke free stove. I gotcha. The CEO of Solo Stove got just got fired over that ad. Did you hear this? That's a true story. No, no I, didn't I didn't hear about it's, this. It's like, Basically, false advertising. No, it's not false advertising. <laughs> he's not. He's not forced or obligated to disclose no. his cannabis use. It was the whole. <laughs> it became a very viral ad, right? Like Snoop's going to quit smoking reefer, and everybody bought into it. And then, if you go and look on any social media, you're going to see an ad of Snoop hanging out over a solo stove because solo stove is a. It burns the smoke out, so it's a smoke-free fire pit, is what it is, and that's what they were using. So the ads made like the top 15 ads of the year or something like that, but they didn't move any more stoves. So they, they sold no more fire pits. It didn't move merchandise. So the CEO <laughs> was replaced. How That's embarrassing. Great. Yeah. <laughs> There's a fun, fun little tidbit for you kids. Uh, all right. They also dropped the ad at the wrong time. Cause like who's buying a solo stove in the middle of winter? Well, it was, they've been running it since late summer, man. Where are you going? Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't watch ads. <laughs> yeah, Obviously. I don't watch ads either. That's why I didn't know it was an ad. Yeah. All right. Well, number eight is Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, and it's directed by West Ball. West Ball. Woo! Yeah. And I'm doing my uh, man impression. He did the uh, Maze Runner, and stars Owen Teague, Freya Allen, Peter Macon, and Kevin Durant is in this bad boy. It's opening mm-hmm. on May 10th, 2024. Caesar, the chimpanzee who led the apes to world domination, died at the end of 2017's War for the Planet of the Apes. Spoiler alert. It's tragic. Yeah. And, uh, but there's a lot more monkey business to ha- be had here. So apes and monkeys oh are different. Let us have this. I understand. So Wes Ball, who helmed the Maze Runner films, directs the fourth film in the series, which takes place many years after the events of war. And that's about all we know. The effects look phenomenal. Trailer looks phenomenal, but we don't know much about this. Are you guys actually excited for this? Yes, very much so, because it takes the next uh, evolutionary evolution step. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to go there, but I did, and it's I just hit myself easy. for it. Far too easy. Uh, this is going to show us how the apes actually work within each other, because you had a very dissimilar group, obviously coming out of the second movie, obviously went to war in the third movie sure. with the humans against each other. So now we're getting like which ape tribe is going to be dominant. And then the fact that Caesar's son is at the focal point of this movie. I think that is really interesting how that's going to play out. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm cautious because it's not tied into the Matt Reeves ecosystem because this is kind of wholly their own thing. Now it could go the way of that one planet of the apes movie, but we don't talk about, or it could be just as oh. good as Dawn rise war. Yeah. But all three of those movies were really good. Like of the, the really, past really trilogy. Good. And Matt Reeves didn't do the first one. You know, th- there's a possibility this could be great. Yeah. I'm I'm crossing fingers. I love I love new apes. New apes is good. <laughs> that two thousand thing, whatever that was. Oh that my Tim bad. Burton movie. Worst Tim Burton ending yeah. ever. Wahlberg. Oh, God. Ugh. Yeah, I can't say that I care. What's that? I can't say that I care. No, I'm just gonna keep asking until you get it right. What's that? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure I'm going to watch it to give it a chance, but I can't. I, I There's not a part of me that would put this on my top 15 for the year. Wow. Okay. All right. I hey, know. You don't like apes. Yeah. I get it. I, yeah. I, I don't. I don't. See, okay, here's where we go back to the awards episode when I was talking about Godzilla Minus One and how much I loved it because the the thing to remember with me is I'm not a big like monster, like creature Okay. Individual. Sure. Like, I just don't get fascinated by those. Um, but some of the movies have heart to them. And then that's where I can get connected to it. If it's just monsters fighting and destruction, it's hard for me to buy interest in that for whatever reason. But when they integrate, you know, an emotional or story component to it that I can feel in my heart a little bit, then I'm more intrigued by it and I end up liking the movies better. 
I mean, they do find a small child and Caesar's son has to work with a small child. So there will be some hurt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You yeah, don't know. Don't that kid might be a I dick. I don't like his monkey movies. All right. This is, this is probably one of the better trilogies and how it was executed, deployed, sent, marketed because it wasn't oversaturated. It wasn't overhyped. And then it went away for a little while and now it's coming back seven years later and it, it's, it's perfect. It's like the way you should do a new trilogy for apes. Three movies each decade. Or you do it the way number seven's doing it, and you make it ridiculous. Because Godzilla yes! X Kong, yes! <laughs> the new empire, is coming out on March 29th, 2024. It took that spot that uh, Mickey 17 had. Directed by Adam Wingard, who did the last Godzilla versus Kong, starring Dan Stevens, who, mm-hmm. fun fact, did Adam Wingard's first breakout movie, The Guest. So I'm really excited to have those two back together again, because I love mm-hmm. The Guest. Mm-hmm. Also, Rebecca Hall, Brian Tyree Henry, uh, and a bunch of other people. So the two greatest kaiju of all time are back for round two in the follow-up to the MonsterVerse 2021 showdown. However, we don't know much about it. They, it seems like they're going to be allies this time, and they're going to face a colossal undiscovered threat hidden within our world. That's all we really know about this one. Uh, John, uh, this seems like it's right up your alley. Oh, this is so up my alley. This is so up my alley. I I, I might have to smoke afterwards. <laughs> okay. Just from the things that I pick up from the tr- the very first trailer, because I haven't watched the second trailer and this, the sort of things that I be- have been leaked. You've got uh, Godzilla and Kong. They're definitely teaming up. They're teaming up against a larger ape creature uh, called the Scar King. And that Scar King is actually uh, his whole special power is that he's... Sh- you're giving too much away. I was going to say, I feel like you're running through the entire yeah, synopsis of a movie know. you haven't even seen yet. I All right. literally don't want to know. <laughs> All right, the so, less the information, the better. Yeah. So last the last time, so let, okay, I'll do this instead. I'm going to make some predictions as to what we're going to see uh, in this movie because I already know there's a few things out there. I won't touch on those, but... There's, uh, there we're going to see no, this because other... those things inform your your vision. So how about just you're excited about it and why you like Godzilla and Kong? How about that? Because they're freaking awesome. Okay, there you go. Rawr. There's not much else that needs to be said about them. Godzilla looks awesome. King Kong looks freaking awesome. I can't wait. Why are they glowing different colors? Uh, it's all has to do with the energy that's that is in the Hollow Earth area. Uh, are so, you telling me this is like uh, chakra stuff right now? <laughs> like their aura? <laughs> well, it's like if you notice, your the, energy is really giving me like defensive right now. See, well, when Godzilla's uh, happy, he's pink. When he's unhappy, he's green. That's how that works. Okay. And when he's mad, he's blue because he's pink. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> I don't watch monster movies fighting each other. It just seems beneath me. What? <laughs> Shit. Oh my gosh! Shots fired! I can't believe you said that to John. How very dare you? Wow. We just had to sit there and listen to you go into this whole thing about Romulus and how it's related to the Star Trek timelines and all this other bullshit. Like you're gonna be like, I don't watch the Godzilla movies because they're beneath me. See, that was a weirdo. Double, that was a double shot because that's what Amanda said just in the last segment we just did about the, the apes movies and and it was a shot at john okay i will well, say i did watch this trailer and i did like the first movie this one does i mean it's bordering on absolutely ridiculous yeah it's a fast 10 type experience yeah i'm this one step shy of hitting space right that's <laughs> so this could go either way do you not agree this could go either way yeah, nope. Godzilla could go okay. to space and he would actually be fine because he would like soak up the sun's radiation and make him even bigger. And then he'd be super Godzilla. Yep. Yeah. And he'd he would be, kick no, the he'd earth be, with his foot like a, like a ball. Like a he soccer. would be space Godzilla because there is space Godzilla in the monster. Of course, of course there, there, is. there is. Jesus H. Christ. All right. Uh, which is a movie I want to see next year. So number six, Beetlejuice 2. And I want to make him a superhero. Why not? Uh, Beetlejuice 2 comes out on September 6th. 2024, directed by Tim Burton. It's going to star Michael Keaton, of course. Winona Ryder's coming back. Catherine O'Hara's coming back. Jenna Ortega is joining because she's basically the new Winona Ryder. Yeah, good, good cast, strong cast. Tim Burton retains with Michael Keaton uh, again, September 6th. I don't know if I said that. To return to one of his early iconic roles, 
uh, or characters in the sequel to 1988's Beetlejuice. It's been a long freaking time. Legacy sequels always scare me, but Jenna Ortega has been on fire the last couple of years, and she's going to be Lydia's daughter. So, yeah, man. I mean, Michael Keaton still has it. I He's still got the chops. I have no doubt about that. I don't know well, that I'm excited the, about this, though. With the Beetlejuice musical doing as well as it has, there's still a very much deep love for the property, so this makes total sense that this would come out. What is the Beetlejuice Whether, musical? I don't know that. Oh, the Beetlejuice musical is so good. It's basically the first movie for the most part except that Beetlejuice wants to come back to life and it has a connection to Lydia's mom's death and how Beetlejuice is also like mourning his mother and it's a break the fourth wall very comedic very um, non red state musical we'll call it there's a joke about burning books and uh, it, it's it's fantastic it is so so good um so yeah, there's definitely a fan base for Beetlejuice to continue. I don't know if we need this, but I'm interested and excited because it is still very much in the zeitgeist. I'm excited to see what they what they do with this and how they push the story, if they are going to push the story or not. Uh, I miss Beetle, Beetlejuice. I, I I always kind of wanted to see more of this story, and I'm I'm just excited to see Michael Keaton back in f- uh, full form. I only recently watched the first Beetlejuice. I want to say like a year or two ago. Um, I can't remember your parent is sucks. (laughs) (laughs) I know. I know. Um, So I can't say that I'm it's not like something that I'm most eager to go watch, but I'll check it out, you know, for sure. You've never. But I don't have that nostalgia to it. You had never seen Vito just to why would you watch it just recently? Because I think I well, I have a couple of friends who are absolutely obsessed with um, Beetlejuice, one friend in particular. Interesting. And I was like, well, I've heard enough about this movie. And I let me clarify, I had seen plenty of like snippets of the movie, but I never watched the entire thing from beginning to end in one sitting. So I'm sure I had seen like segments of mm. it and broken apart, but I hadn't watched it from beginning to end. So I, I made myself sit down to like watch the whole thing. So I, I think it, because I didn't watch it when I was younger, like all the way through, I don't have that same attachment to the original story. Okay. Interesting. Well, we'll see what happens with uh, Beetlejuice, man. I mean, Tim Burton's been uh, kind of reignited his career as of late. So this could be this could be good. Number five, we're in the top five finally of um, those polls, basically, is Joker Fole Adu. Uh, it's directed by Todd Phillips, who directed the original Joker with Joaquin Phoenix. This time, Lady Gaga joins him, as well as uh, Brendan Gleeson, Zazie Beetz, love her, Catherine Keener's in this. And we don't know much about it. We know Lady Gaga is playing Harley Quinn, and he is the Joker again. And then, reportedly, this will be a musical. But we don't have full confirmation, but Lady Gaga's in it, so there's probably going to be some songs. How do we feel about this? No one's excited about this. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'll step not. in. I am I'm excited. Surprised this is at number five, to be perfectly honest. But go ahead. I'm I am excited. Too. It's got Lady Gaga, and she is a very talented actress. Sure. She's also a very talented musician. Sure. And I think she is going to be the star of the show for this, for sure. I think it's going to have less impact around Joker. And more around her as Harley Quinn. Hmm. I would be more interested in it if that were the case. Um, I like the Joker movie, but that story's done. Like, there was nothing about that that made me need to see more. Nothing. Right. And like, maybe that's I, the problem with this. Right. I, I enjoyed that movie for what it was. I did not enjoy it for a comic book movie. I didn't enjoy it for any other reason than, like, just the human aspects of it. Uh, I didn't need to see more of the story. Yeah, I'm with John. It's it's I'm I love what Joaquin Phoenix did with the character. I think the character is interesting, vivacious, like just oozes on the screen. Like it's it's brilliant to watch. But it's the creation of the Joker that was great. Now that you are the Joker and in this movie, can you do Jokerish type things? And if you already are throwing Harley Quinn in it, you're telling me, well, the story is not based on Joaquin Phoenix. It's based on needing help. And so I don't know if I need a movie that has help. Like I really, 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 really dug the Joker for what it was. It was so, so good. But yeah, to continue that, 
is just a cash grab. Could be. We could all be surprised. We could all yeah. be. Yeah, we could. But again, I'm very surprised that it's this high on so many polls. Uh, the most anticipated. I don't. I don't know anyone that's really stoked about. I'm sure. I'm sure many of you listening probably are stoked for this. I haven't heard anyone personally say that they were excited for this. Yeah, I'm more excited for Ballerina Argyle and Quiet Place Day One than I am for this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm more excited for Godzilla X Kong. Hey, hey, this. don't you say it like that. <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and tell me the entire plot again? I was going to tell you my guess of what it was, like I did last time with the the other uh-huh. movie, which uh-huh. spoiled it. Yes, which spoiled. How it. did I spoil it? Because you, because you in... gave details we didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know the details and either. You were right, and you know that you were going to be that's, right, and that's the problem. That's not spoiling it. I was it just is. right. It is. It's like we insider trading. Know. You have it like is. inside knowledge. <laughs> it's insider trading. Yeah. You, Jesus Christ, Amanda, you just murdered some people who are driving at the moment. I know. I'm so sorry. Please, I hope that you are not in an accident. <laughs> Me too. Uh, before we move on, The Painter stars uh, Charlie Weber, Madison Bailey, and John Voight. And The Painter is available to buy on digital today. It's about an ex-CIA operative who's put in danger when a mysterious woman from his past resurfaces. Now targeted by a relentless rogue black ops program, he must rely on skills he left behind in a high stakes game of survival. And the painter is on voodoo right now. It's rated R from Paramount Pictures. Trailer looks very exciting. So check this out. The painter is out now. Now, if you want to possibly want a digital code, you can send us again your name to contest at the HollywoodOutsider.com. Share the show and send us a screenshot that you've shared the show on your social media. And uh, we will enter you into a chance to win one of five digital codes. Now, top four, Furiosa. Mm, Furiosa. Yeah, this deserves to be here. George Miller is directing from Mad Max Fury Road. Stars Anya Taylor-Joy, Chris Hemsworth, Tom Burke, Nathan Jones, and Angus Sampson. Opens on May 24th, 2024. Anya Taylor-Joy will play a younger version of the war rig driving badass Furiosa in this prequel to Mad Max Fury Road. And uh, yeah, it's a prequel. Chris Hemsworth's going to play a villain, it looks like, from the trailer. And this is going to uh, tell the tale of Furiosa's kidnapping and a rise through a Morton Joe's ranks. Yeah, I wanted Charlize Theron more. I do. I like Anya Taylor-Joy, but she's no Charlize Theron. But this still looks pretty pretty kick-ass so i am very excited for this movie i like the imagery from mad max fury road i like the imagery that we're seeing here in this trailer i you know the way they play with lights the way they play with shadow the way it it looks like it's on a comic book page in a lot of ways and uh i really love dig this whole aesthetic they're they're going with so i i'm good for this i ended up getting a love, I guess, for Mad Max over years of rewatching it because the first time I watched it, I had very little interest um, in ever watching something like that again, just because I felt like all we did was go in a big circle and that really bothered me. Sure. But it, it really, visually, literally, that is the plot. The plot is you go in a is, big circle. Yeah. Yeah. Visually, it is a stunning, stunning film. So I know that. I'm going to probably walk out of it and be a little mind blown from that standpoint. But I will say that I go in with some hesitation as it relates to any storyline. Yeah. I, I remember seeing Fury Road and people, oh, such a masterpiece of storytelling. I'm like, hold on. All right. Masterpiece of action, of cinematography, of score. <laughs> fine. Storytelling. They went from one point to the next point and then back to the original point. <laughs> I think people got too distracted by the bases with the flamethrower. Yeah, yeah, basically. Like, there's a flamethrower guitar or whatever. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's... Uh, uh, I will say Hemsworth looks great here. Like, he really... Oh, yeah. He does look good. Yeah. I mean, I'm for the story. So if the story was going to work in this one better than the last one, then I'll be in because it is Anna Taylor-Joy. But I'm not holding out hope. Okay. Can you go back to what Aaron just said about they just went from point A to point B and some stuff kind of happened. That was the last <laughs> was, movie. That's why I didn't was, like the last movie. Yeah, he's saying that's why I didn't like the story in that. Oh, okay. He wants a better right. story. Yeah. He wants a better, I want a better story. How do we feel about Anya Taylor-Joy basically taking up the reins for 
for Charlize Theron. Because no. to me, I would much rather see Charlize Theron. She made the character mm-hmm. interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Anya Taylor-Joy, first of all, I used to really, really like her. Now I feel like we're just throwing her in everything and I'm getting a little oversaturated with her because I don't feel like she's she's a good actress, but I feel like she's typically the same character. You know, she's the she comes off a little crass, a little brash, and you know, it takes some time for anybody to warm up to her, for her to warm up to people, and oh boy, this is just her character. Um, but t- taking the lead after Charlize, honey, honey, no, no, no. <laughs> wow. I'm sorry, but <laughs> Charlize is Charlize for a reason. That's true. You you do understand that Charlize went from point A to point B to point A. <laughs> And I don't give Anna a Taylor, shit. I'd Anna watch Taylor her go to, Joy, from point A to point A. I would watch Taylor her Joy read Joy took read out a, all of Russia in the most complicated game to play on the planet. Okay. Oh my god! <laughs> that was such, Did you really? And, are you really trying to say that Anya Taylor Joy is a better actress than Charlize Theron? He's saying she's smarter. Monster saying, much? He's saying I'm she's saying smarter. That she's, she's smarter. The character oh. is smarter. That's yeah, she's going to stay at point A the entire time and never have to go to point B because she knows that it's just going to come back there. <laughs> that character would have died immediately in that universe. So <laughs> immediately. How do you know that that castle she could have thrown, you know, would have been like a spiky throwy thing or something. Let's with pretend out of it. it's the same character from from um, Queen's Gambit. OK, let's pretend it's actually not Furiosa. She's actually that character who becomes Furiosa because she got so sick of the misogyny in chess. Huh? There we go. Bam. Crossover. And she's right. not the same actress. She's totally different in the menu. She is very good in the menu. Yeah, she really Okay, was. you got one movie where she's a little off key from that. All right. She's also Princess she's, Peach. She's also very different in New Mutants. Duh. Very different. You guys are all citing wow. really shitty movies. Easy. That would not be <laughs> the reference that, point. Nobody that said that the movies were good. The menu was actually fantastic, by the way. The it menu was We're good. saying that Anna Taylor Joy was a different actress in all of those movies. So we're refuting I would your disagree. Statement. I would disagree. I'm just saying think, she's not Charlize Theron. She's a right, good actress. That's all. At I'm, the end of the day, that. that's yeah. all that matters. That's, yeah. That's we can my agree point. on that. Let's see if she rises to the challenge. Fair point. Uh, you know what won't rise to the challenge? Because I'm never going to see it. Dune Part 2, which comes out on March 1st, 2024, <laughs> directed by Denis Villeneuve and starring Timothée Chalamet, Zendaya, Rebecca Ferguson, Javier Bardem, Josh Brolin, and I don't care about any of it. So the first installments, um, day and date release on HBO Max, kind of put this sequel into question for a bit, but they decided to, let's go for it. And in fact, now they're talking about a possible Part 3. So there might be a third one. If you want to really fall asleep. So this one sees uh, big names like Florence Pugh and Austin Butler also join, join in. I don't know, really. They, they're kind of, if you read the book, you kind of know the storyline. But it's the second portion of Frank Herbert's epic sci-fi novel. Troy, I know you know this book back to front. You, did, you yeah. and I were on the same page. We did not really care for the first one. There's a, there's a reason, so trying to figure out how to say this nicely without having all the dune people crucify me with a sandworm the <laughs> the book is painful very good the concepts the stories everything about the book is very good and it's where it should have stayed because in the book it's described a certain way when you transpose transform move over i don't have the right word over to a different medium you have to change things to work for the medium the problem with dune part one is that it is the closest Dune media, visual, TV, movie type thing that's been done that is the closest to the book. Even the style of the ships, the characters, everything feels very what you think the book would look like. The problem is, is that that doesn't work in film. It is boring as sin because the good first part, it's like watching, um, oh my gosh, the first part of Return of the King where you literally read seven chapters of how Minas Tirith is com- configured. Nobody cares. It's a white freaking town with seven layers. Done. Move on. Ride Gandalf rides up on horse. You see all seven layers and you're done. Right? That's the whole point of this movie series is that there's so much depth to Dune to put it on the screen at the length that it is bores the living shit out of the audience because you need all of that information to enjoy what's coming, but it just doesn't work. You so have that- to consolidate it. Let me ask you a question. 
and, and try to look at this fairly because I know I know you you're already formulating your answer before I've even asked my question. <laughs> so think think it through. As a reader of the book, many people that were readers raved about this and absolutely loved this movie. Why? Why why do you see it so differently than they do? Because it's the, it, it, is, it is the closest adaptation to the book. If you are a book lover, you're going to love this. It is exactly what you read. The problem is, is that for people that critique film and television and have to sit back and go, does this resonate with the masses to get enough revenue in to make up the costs for something like this? I don't know who signed off on this as a studio exec in this format because it just doesn't hit the mass appeal. It hits the very niche book lovers. Well, you liked the book a lot, but why didn't you like you just because it was boring, right? That's why I didn't like it. It was just boring. Yeah, because because I, I understand the difference between TV, film and book. And it's like, I want to see something different on TV and film. It's supposed to be told in a very short, condensed two hours, maybe three hours total and do both movies in one movie or split them into two 90 minute things. Like I can get a lot of the information I need from a mass audience perspective to go. That was a damn cool story. Right. In this case, it's like, I don't care how many races there are. I don't care how many ships there are. I don't care how many sand crystals there are. I don't care how many blue eyes there are. Like none of that matters to the general masses. Like, should this have been a series? I feel like this would be a better series for people. It would have been a much better television series. series. It's been done as a series. Yeah. But this version of it as a TV series would have done better than the original TV series. You're talking about the sci-fi TV series, Dune and Children of Dune, Mm -hmm. which were fantastic tv series yes the series those series were good right this is a book lovers you know dream and if you were to take this and break it into a tv series it would have done better with this budget and the scope and this director yeah this is like saying obi-wan should have been a movie but we made it a tv series this is saying this one should have been broken into a tv series and obi-wan should have stayed as a movie kind of thing so what about you, John, since you love those, are you looking forward to part two? I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to sit down and watch part two. Uh, I, I, I have the same problem at, with part one as everyone did, which is that... Not everyone. Is, a lot of people loved it. A lot of people okay, loved well, it. As, as a few people did seem to have had, which is it seemed to have... It seemed to be too drawn out for the story they're telling. And then there's no, ma- there's no major payoff in one degree or another at the end it's just like okay and now we're walking into the desert <laughs> yep yep and the gunslinger followed <laughs> i understand that when i look at the movies this last year that did that to me which was like fast x and uh spider-man into the spider-verse or across the spider-verse or you know fold the spider-verse in half whatever that one was like i I'm a little tired of the whole, okay, let me not punch my microphone. Let me, let's just walk into the desert ending as opposed to give me something that's substantial for an ending so that I can enjoy this versus just, okay, we're going to definitely do a sequel. I hate that. Does it matter that you knew it was a sequel though? Like when you came into Mission Impossible, right? You knew that there was going to be a part two. When you came into Rebel Moon, you knew there was going to be a part two. When you come into Dune, you know there's a part two. Where Spider-Man... You did not know. Oh, Spider-Man did not know. Fast X, I knew. Spider-Man, I did not know. I was just like, how are they going to wrap this up the whole time? And then they just didn't. This, <laughs> I I knew going in, there was, you know, because it says part one. I knew going in, they were going to cut it cut it up in a certain way. I it, Okay, from a visual aspect, this goddamn movie is beautiful. From, a, from an acting standpoint, so well done. So well done as far as the acting is concerned. But it just takes... It's like the Lord of the Rings if it was boring. It takes yeah. too long to get anywhere. Yeah. That's about how I felt. Yeah, I don't care. I never got through the first one. <laughs> yeah, this is this this is a book lovers movie. It is not a mass <laughs> appeal movie. Mm-hmm. I can see that. <laughs> so Amanda too much setup. if I'm understanding you, you're like, nah. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, nah. <laughs> you know how many times okay. I've tried the first one? <laughs> I've yeah. tried it so many times that I fall asleep every single time. It's, like it's better aid. than ambient sleep music, <laughs> let me tell you. Amanda <laughs> wants to see sand. She's going to a beach. Yeah. Amen to go. that, for real. <laughs> All right. Well, number two on this list is Inside Out 2. Yeah. Directed by Kelsey Mann, uh, starring Amy Poehler, Phil Smith, and Louis Black, and opening on June 14th. 2024 that's a, an interesting day 
That is the best day of the entire year, just so you're aware. I like that. It was coming. (laughs) Uh, The wonderful Pixar movie Inside Out showed us what things are like inside of an emotional young girl's head. So in terms of how are they going to raise the stakes? Well, they're going inside a teenager's head this time. So it's going back to Riley. She's in college. And we're going to get our new host of emotions. And so we're getting some of the voice cast back, but uh, some new ones will be there as well. Why are you guys excited for Inside Out 2? Or just, is this just another Disney cash grab to you? I mean, it's a Disney cash grab for sure, because it's a property that did very well. And it's a property <laughs> that you're like, how are they going to ever do anything more with this? Um, mm-hmm. And then you said the same thing about cars. You said the same thing about Toy Story. You said the same thing about Monsters mm-hmm. Incorporated. I think the way that they're doing this is super, super smart, especially when you think about the number of teenagers today that deal with anxiety, depression, ADHD. There's a whole range of emotions that don't get talked about in conversations. So what better way to start having those conversations where parents and children can go to the movie together and be educated about those conditions Mm -hmm. in a fun, fantastic way. My only concern, only concern with this movie is that Bing Bong was a tragic moment for me in the first Mm. movie. I was on the floor bawling and my kids yeah. refused to go to the movies with me ever again. Sure. You were on the my, floor of the movie theater. Do you know how disgusting floor. that is? It was a very clean recliner based movie never theater. Clean. That was back it's never nope. clean. Nope. Mm-hmm. Someone nope. peed on that at some point. <laughs> I was, I was if distraught. If it's sticky, it's not for the reason you think. <laughs> I was distraught. Or it is. That ain't sequence. soda. That ain't soda. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You don't know the things I've seen in a movie theater. I let don't me care. tell you. That's how, that's how badly distraught I was. I didn't care what was on. The, I was done. At that at that moment, okay. you if were they embarrassing try to bring, a little. I'm yeah, just, if they I'm tried just kind of sad a little, you probably Jesus. had hepatitis after that. But if they if they try to bring Bing Bong back to life in this movie, I'm out. That's all I'm saying. You would you would actually get up and walk out of the theater. I would get up and walk out of the no, theater. No, he'd get on like the they, floor. I get on the crawl floor, out. crawl he'd my way. Start, he'd start like rocking back and forth. Make it as dramatic as possible. I will oh, not stand for this. I'm going to crawl <laughs> out through the theater, and then I would go buy a Bing Bong doll because he was back to life. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I I think Troy has a really good point. This, to me, we're not reinventing. We're not, I mean, yes, obviously there is the monetary, you know, aspect to it because the first one was so well received, did so well. Disney would never. But to be perfectly honest with you, I think this is the perfect movie to create a series from Mm -hmm. because you can go through different stages of life and you can... It's almost very, it was almost very cathartic. And I think even to Troy's point, he was experiencing, it was cathartic for him because it unlocked something he didn't understand that he had, you know, from his childhood. Feelings. And so imaginary feelings, friends. imaginary friends, loss, you know, all that good stuff. Mm. And when we think about teenage years, oh my gosh, those, in my opinion, were some of the hardest years to emotionally move through. Um, and you don't even understand why you're feeling the way you're feeling in so many ways. And you don't have somebody who's dumbing it down for you like your parents would do when you bump, you know, you scratch your knee or something. So the level of power that can come with them properly, you know, moving through this film and the teenage emotions, and then eventually, hopefully also moving into like adulthood. And then, you know, you're having to live on your own, you're having to pay bills, life is a struggle, you're finding a job, you get laid off, you have to find a new job, you start to develop a relationship and you get married and you have kids, all of that. And then eventually, you know, your parents are starting to get ill, da 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 da. There's so many stages of life. God, you're making me sad, man. Why don't you- I know, I know. Jesus. There's, but think about all of the good and the bad. It's not just the bad feelings that you're going through. It's the good feelings too. The bad ones just you know, they have a lasting impact, whereas the the good ones don't sit with us as long. Mm. Regardless, we all feel them and having them opened up in a fun and entertaining way, I think is incredibly valuable and beneficial, even if it means Disney gets richer than rich. I don't care because it's it's worth it. Like the first movie was so freaking good. That I cannot wait for the second one. I, I think the first movie is probably the last Pixar movie I got excited for. So I am i can't wait to see this. Honestly, for whatever reason, Pixar movies I don't usually get blown away with. 
or from. Uh, but that one it was so sharp. It was just really, really captured the issue with psychology and how complicated it is and how hard it is to understand and control and especially in a young child. I mean, just all the factors of, of psychology and the different emotions that people go through. I just, I just absolutely love how it captured that and made it presentable for kids and adults alike. So that is one that I will see a sequel to like toy story five. I will never watch. I haven't seen toy story four, you know, to me, you get a perfect ending, you enjoy it. And Toy Story 3 had a perfect ending. Uh, Inside Out, I could see more. I'm excited for this, but at the same time, it's not going to be something that I'm going to be driving to the theater to go see because I don't. I just... doesn't feel like you're I, excited for it then. I I want to see... Oh, wait, let, me, let me rephrase it then. I wait till it comes out on Disney Plus. You that guy? I, would, I, I got rid of my Disney Plus, so... So you're never no. going to watch it. <laughs> You know what? Maybe you're right. Maybe I'm never going to watch it. You know what? I don't want to watch it. <laughs> All right. Well, I, here's what I know everybody here is going to watch because it's number one. Number one. And I think it's it's up there for all of us. I know it's my number one most anticipated. For sure. Deadpool 3. Finally, he's in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And finally, desperately, <laughs> who would have thought Deadpool would be the one that could save the Marvel Cinematic Universe from its own excess and it's directed by sean levy man it opens on july 26 2024 it's the only mcu movie coming out this year and it stars ryan reynolds and hugh jackman my god tear the merc with the mouth is back and so is hugh jackman's wolverine it will not disrupt the logan storyline so you don't have to worry about that it's not going to affect that film but this is going to be the first Deadpool movie since Disney brought um, or bought Fox and brought those characters into their world. And they are making him part of the MCU. And it's still going to be R rated. It's still going to have that edgy humor. I'm sure it'll be neutered to some degree, probably a few fewer dick jokes. But the fact that we're going to get Deadpool going up against Wolverine on screen and Hugh Jackman's Wolverine at that. I can't tell you how excited I am. It'll be all right. I'm kidding. I I'm was excited. like, hold on. You're kicked off the podcast. Yeah, right. That, that's what I had to do. Shit. I should have said something like that sooner. Um, <laughs> I, I'm i excited to, for this for all the reasons everyone everyone else is going to be. I, I'm also excited about the 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 whole this whole plan that they did about they got so tired of things getting leaked that they started leaking their own fake things. So now I really want to see what's actually going to be happening. Cause I haven't been paying attention to all the leaks. I just saw the one where I'm like, Oh, Hugh Jackman. Awesome. I haven't seen the other ones. So I'm excited to see what they bring in because if they bring it, if they find a, a, an excuse to bring Tom Holland into this, that would be awesome. I don't need Tom Holland. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm I was good. like, hold on a second. Nah. Where did that come from? Well, because well, because Spider-Man's the part of Deadpool. And yeah, they, they go up against the, her a lot. Yeah, but yeah. we've got a multiverse. We can use different Spider Men. That's true. Any, anyhow, Tom, Andy, like, Andrew Garfield. Why are you giving those? insider information, Amanda? Come on, we already yelled at yeah. Arjun for this earlier. Yeah, I swear to God, I'm just gonna. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry that you guys haven't watched all of the movies in the past like three years or TV shows. Fair point. So we're all excited. Deadpool, oh, number I'm one. I'm so sorry you guys didn't watch all Godzilla movies in oh ever in history. Oh my gosh. No, you're telling us stuff from, from other works, Dude, from irrelevant the rubber works. suit oh. movies were shit. I'm sorry. I know it's not, it's, <gasps> you're not allowed to say that. I know it's against the law, uh, uh, but they were kind of shit. How dare you? They're cool in that, man, I wish I could make movies in my backyard in my bathtub kind of way. But in terms of actually- Velocipaster type <laughs> level? Yes. There you there you, there you, you. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Zip up suits were like popular because of the sleeve stacks. I mean, it, it makes everything better back in the 70s. And 80s. Something. Something. Back to Deadpool 3, though. Yeah. I am so excited. And the chemistry is palpable. Like, I am waiting for these two to join on screen and watch the sexual tension just mm. flow. Just pop. Mm -hmm. wow. it's the moment we've all been waiting for they have been teasing us for so many years about these so two. many years oh my gosh yeah like the sexual tension might get me to change teams wow. <laughs> right i'm saying wow 
I, what do I'm you mean, already right? a Hugh Jackman side. I'm just letting. I'm you know. on all the sides, you know, <laughs> especially Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds. Oh. That's a love. That's a love. A bromance that can never be broken. What a sandwich, huh? My my fear was <laughs> my fear was that Disney was picking this up and it wasn't going to get the R rating. Then it got the R rating, and I was like, okay, cool. And then it's like, and it's going to be part of the MCU. And I was like, well, shit. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, but the MCU really could use a pick me up right now. So this could be great. <laughs> yeah. I think that this will be a shift that we need for for Marvel movies. Well, you know what? Let's all calm down. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I'm with her 100%. They need to do something to revamp Marvel. Oh, no. Because right now do... I'm like, kiss my ass. I don't care about the next one. This is the only thing I'm excited about. They yeah. Need shift, they need to shift into X-Men and mm-hmm. Fantastic Four. Mm-hmm. Space and this, leave this everything else behind. Them. This could connect them. Yep. All Which right. can still bring Scarlet Witch into the, you know, keep her around. Okay, oh, just, you know. of course. So we'll do that. Of it course. could. Yeah, it could. It of absolutely course. could. Especially, especially when Doctor Strange was the best MCU movie in the most recent era. Which is mo- not saying a lot. I mean, I, I'm not trying to hate on it, but it definitely was not the same level of work that we had seen in previous phases. Okay, now we're going to do our own picks, and I want to preface, if you if you have something to add to it constructively, add it. If you're just going to say, oh, that's cool, I'm excited, just don't do that. Just shut up? Just shut up. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll never get through this. But what I would okay. like everyone to do is throw in theater or streaming, as in, that'll indicate your level of excitement, I guess, you know? I'm definitely going to see that one in the theater or that one I'm going to see in stream. If, if it is streaming, well, we don't the answer to that, but you know what I'm saying. So let's go with that. Troy, you're okay. up first. What are your films that you're most excited I'm going to see about? pretty much all of these in the theater. The only one that I might see on the streaming would be the animated one I'll talk about in just a second. But first, we already talked about the fact that I have this thing for imaginary friends. And we already talked about Ryan Reynolds. And when you put those two things together, you get if... A young girl who goes through a difficult experience begins to see everyone's imaginary friends who have been left behind as their real life friends have grown up. Does star Ryan Reynolds and a cavalcade of voices, including Steve Carell. And it's written and directed from the mind of John Krasinski on May 17th, 2024. I cannot wait for this movie. It looks so good. Theater. Definitely a theater. A very, very creative. One of the most innovative films coming out this year. It reminds me of that Amblin magic. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, definitely a theater for me, too. All right. Then we have Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. When the discovery of an ancient artifact unleashes an evil force, the Ghostbusters new and old, yes, everybody's coming back except for Egon, must join forces (laughs) to protect their home and save the world from a second ice age. I mean, he could come back as a ghost again, I suppose. Starring previous installments, McKenna uh, Grave, Paul Rudd, Carrie Coon, Finn Wolfhard, and the rest of the original Ghostbusters are coming back, directed by Gil Kennan and written by Gil Kennan and Jason Reitman. March 22nd, it has moved up. So super excited for Ghostbusters to be coming out this year. Probably streaming. Blasphemous. Yeah, I don't know what you're saying about streaming on that one. But I am going to say that that's going to be in the theater for me. Okay. Boston Hang makes on. me feel Hang good, on. Aaron. Hang on. I will go to the theater, but I, I do have a legitimate question. Do you not miss the tone of the original Ghostbusters? Mm-hmm. Well, the tone of the original Ghostbusters had to shift in the last movie because it wasn't taking place in New York. This is back in New York. So there's no saying that there would be the same tone because all of the Ghostbusters are back. You didn't answer my and question. And not just at the end of the movie. Don't you miss the tone of the original? Because people keep raving about what a great uh, return to form this, that past last movie was, and it wasn't anything like the original. It was not a return to form, in my opinion. Different kind of movie, I agree. They they modified it, but I had a real problem with how they treated Egon in that movie. It's basically a deadbeat dad. So that's yeah, that's but, just an honest question. But I mean, theater. I mean, if I'll you see think, the theater though. If if you think about like where the people were at the start of the second movie. You know, they got kicked out of the university. They had to do their own jobs. Ray had his bookstore. I mean, it makes it makes sense how it kind of went through. Okay. You know, the timeline was long enough that, yeah, there could have been some challenges with Egon's family because he was so obsessed with the ghosts. Okay. I'm not trying to poo-poo your pick. I'm going to see it in the theater, too. I just, I hope they bring some of that tone from, from the original back. I want some of that flavor back. Fair enough. Well, from one of the longest wars in movie history next to Braveheart, the untold story behind Helm's Deep, hundreds of years before the fateful War of the Rings, 
is telling the life and blood soaked times of its founder, Helm Hammerhand and the King of Rohan. It's an animated prequel type movie uh, with Miranda Otto actually bringing back the voice of Eowyn. Also, Brian Cox and Sean Dooley will mm. be in this as well, targeting around Christmas 2024. Could be a week earlier. Not quite sure yet. Um, this is no ties to the Rings of Power series on Amazon. It is truly its own thing. I'll do theater if you go with me. <laughs> Otherwise, it's that's, streaming. That's a, that's a high praise because Aaron does not do cartoons. I don't. That's why I, I, yeah. you have to go with me because I'm probably going to have some gaps. <laughs> uh, that's going to be streaming for me. Wow. I'm surprised by that, John. I'm I'm not as I'm not as big into Lord of the Rings as a lot of people are. Mm. One, two, need um, more kaiju. I need more kaiju in my life. I think it'll depend for me on what I have going on around that time. Because you know, looking at <laughs> wow. Christmas 2024, that's I I know I'm going to be traveling and stuff around there. So I'm like, I don't know if I'll be making it a priority to go see it in the theater. But I would prefer to. Just because of the animation, I think that that, you know, depending on how it looks, um, could be enjoyable to watch in a theater. So the story could be good. Mm -hmm. The animation part will definitely erase any previous animated versions of anything Lord of the Rings related. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yep. So and because I have AMC A-list, I would go see this in the theater. Well, it but sounds like you're I, obligated to. Yeah, only because you're fine. Only because you damn better go to the theater for me. <laughs> The animated makes me nervous. I, that's fair. Yeah. All right. Uh, number four for me is Civil War oh, in yes. the near future, or maybe happening right now. It's a documentary. A team oh of God. journalists <laughs> uh, travel across the United States during a rapidly escalating civil war that has engulfed the entire nation. This stars uh, Kristen Dunst, Jesse Plemons, and Nick Offerman. Nick Offerman. Written and directed by Alex Garland. Oh, yes. My yes. Yes. And happening now. Uh, it's going to, yeah, literally happening now in real life. Should have released uh, I mean, it on election day. Yeah, they should have. Uh, April 26th, which is close to the primary day. Yeah. So still time to buy water and toilet paper before this comes out. <laughs> uh, theatrical, man. You know, Alex Garland, ex machina. I love him. Absolutely love him. Yeah, I, this is 100% in theater for me. It's going to be streaming for me if i watch Ew, it. Uh, disappointing i don't care i i don't want to watch this documentary i john I'm over what it. happened to the last time when you and i did a podcast together and we were just like bonding we were like Best yeah buds. and now dead. you're shitting on me i get it's it dead. <laughs> we're just not on the same page right now i john, we're not john, vibing john i get it we're not. out of his depressive state he watched ted lasso he's in a good place now <laughs> He doesn't need to watch real life in the theater. That's exactly right. Thank you, Troy. <laughs> Fair I was trying to get those thoughts out, but freaking some harpy decided to jump all over my words. <laughs> some what was that? <laughs> I, you heard me. Oh, I still love you, though. <laughs> I love you, too, sweetheart. I will go to the theater uh, and look out my window at uh, the theater. Um, I'll be it'll there. It'll be happening outside. For sure. I'll be there. Yeah, seriously. All right. And finally, in no relating whatsoever to the original 1996 film Twister, mm -hmm. other than they're just going to be chasing multiple tornadoes because this one's called Twisters. I'm excited. It's going to center on a pair of oh storm chasers who risk their lives in an attempt to test an experimental weather alert system. Sounds like a remake to me, but it's not. <laughs> Starring Glenn Powell, Kitty O'Brien, Maura Tierney, and written by Mark L. Smith, directed by Lee Isaac Chung. Coming July 19th, hmm. Glenn Powell stated specifically that this is not, this is not, not a reboot or a sequel. It is a completely original story. Eh, we'll see about that. Theatrical. Yeah, I don't know. Sure. Theatrical for sure. It's a, uh, Glenn Powell is a movie star, man. He's, he's, he's the guy. He's the next guy. So I'm, I'm on board and I'm going to actually add this to my, my drive-in. I always do like a drive-in on my, in my backyard kind of, you know, I have a screening out my, on my fence. I'm going to watch the first Twister uh, before I go see this one. That has no connection, but it's the exact same plot. I want to see it just because of the spectacle that's going to be on the screen. And that's just about it. I, I love the first movie. I don't care if this one's connected or not. Uh, I'll see it for the spectacle. And hopefully it, it surprises me. This will definitely be theatrical for me because of Glenn Powell. 
but I would say otherwise it would probably be streaming. Wait, because of Glenn Powell, but not the tornadoes? Yeah. I am petrified of tornadoes. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) Flying chickens because it's not a sequel. Yeah, right, right. They're going to have different animals flying through the sky. Yeah, I'm actually terrified of tornadoes. I drove through, literally was in a tornado probably, I think it was like two years ago. So I'm even more petrified of tornadoes now. So I can't say that like that's the part that's going to make me go see a movie because it is a real terrifying fear of mine. Real surprise you were in a tornado because the way you speed, you should have outran it. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. I did I did capture a video on Snapchat, though. I was like, I'm literally in a tornado right now. This is wild. <laughs> Nebraska, man. Look, as long as it's got some Van Halen in this movie, I'm totally in the theater. Nice. Nice. <laughs> It's right. extreme, man. That's extreme. uh Troy, is it my turn, right? Is it my turn? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh first one up is Borderlands, directed by Eli Roth, starring Kate Blanchett. How did they get her? Kevin Hart, Jack Black, and Jamie Lee Curtis, Edgar Ramirez. There's a lot of people on this. Opens on August 9th, 2024. Get ready for some outer space shenanigans. As Eli Roth takes the helm for this adaptation of the popular and wacky video game series. I was a big fan of this series. The film was written by Craig Mazin, who recently made the Last of Us video game franchise. So there's a lot to like here, a lot of potential here. Eli Roth scared the shit out of me at first. Then I saw Thanksgiving, and I'm like, okay, you want me back. He has a chance to keep me as a fan. Hopefully he doesn't lose me. (laughs) Because, man, Borderlands could be a really, really fun time. I think this uh, this could be the next big video game property. If you've never played the game, it is an insane first-person shooter that you can... it's a looter shooter and you team up with your friends and you basically just, you know, you get in innumerable amount of guns and they're all <laughs> ridiculous. It's a fun game. Who wants to see Borderlands? Me, me. Theater all the way. All right. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Uh, Eeyore, going to bum this out? Huh? Huh? <laughs> You know Eeyore. what? Now I am going to. So okay. fuck it. Right. Uh, I, I, until I see a trailer, I'm I'm going to say streaming for me. Okay. All right. This is one that I was so excited for last year. They postponed it because of the strike and whatnot. They, they needed people to get out there and do the press. But coming out on April 26, 2024 is Challengers. It was directed by Luca Guadagnino. I hope I said that right. Starring Zendaya, Josh O'Connor, and Mike Faced. Uh, Zendaya stars in this film, which centers on the relationships between a tennis prodigy turned coach, who's Zendaya. She basically gets an injury and has to become a coach. The struggling former champion, who is her husband and his former best friend, who happens to be her ex-boyfriend. It I, There's a lot to this plot that is not being told, which is the way I like it. I don't want to know more. If you've seen the trailer, the trailer is captivating, man. Like I was sucked in. And I'm like, what is this actually going to be? Like, what is going on? What is behind the curtain here? I'm I'm very excited for Challengers. Yeah, this is theatrical for me. Zendaya all the way. This could be streaming for me. He's just yeah, going opposite anything I say at this point. No, I'm not. No, I think he's saying <laughs> I don't want to leave my house. That's what it sounds I, like to me. He's, he's, agreeing comes, with, he's agreeing with me because Zendaya looked great on HBO Max. So it doesn't matter if she's in streaming or not. She looks great everywhere. So... This one's totally fine watching. Right, thank oh God gosh. you went there with it because I was a little, I was getting a little worried there. Oh boy! I mean, it was still a little weird. So there's that. Okay, Couldn't went either way. <laughs> Chief uh, looks great right. in the sand. Next one is the Fall Guy, directed by David Leach, starring Ryan Gosling, Emily Blunt. Opens on May third, two thousand twenty-four. Trailer is great, minus the choice of song for the trailer. I, I mm-hmm. don't mm-hmm. think they should have went that way. Right? Right? Yeah. Bad choice for a song. But anyway, it's David Leach. Uh, he is former stuntman turned director. He worked on John Wick, Atomic Blonde. He helmed that Deadpool 2, Hobbs and Shaw. The guy makes fun, big budget blockbusters. And this is an adaptation of the 80s TV show where you had Lee Majors playing Colt Seavers. Oh, my God. And now it's got Ryan Gosling playing Lee Majors. And uh, he's going to be making out with Emily Blunt. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm so in. I'm in. This is a theater run. Totally. I can't wait. Sweet. Because of Blunt and Gosling and the action, I will go see this in the theater because I have an A-list membership. I heard he's singing, I'm just Colt, if that helps you. (laughs) (laughs) Is that Ode to the Gun that he's going to (laughs) carry? 
No, Sorry. because his name is Colt Seaver, dummy. God damn it, Troy. <sighs> Son of a bitch. Aaron and I are going to see this in a theater at South by Southwest. Let's drop this name. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's the opening night movie we just found it feels out. Like worse for, than a name drop is yeah. what that feels like. Is, uh, that was, it's the, just announced as the opening night movie. So if we can get in, that's, those are always the hardest ones to get into, too. So can't wait. All right, next up. <laughs> Dude, I am so excited for this. It's shameful. Summer 2024. We don't have an official date yet, but summer. Directed by Mark Malloy, starring Judge Reinhold, John Ashton, Paul Reiser, Bronson Pinchot, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Kevin Bacon. Uh, it's been about 30 years since we saw this guy, but Eddie Murphy is back as Axel Foley. I don't care what the plot is, but if you want to know, he's a Detroit cop who goes to L.A., to investigate corruption after the death of an old friend. It's the same goddamn plot as the previous two movies, and I don't care. I just want to see Axel Foley back in Beverly Hills to make up, make me forget, to wash away the sins of Beverly Hills Cap 3. I'm stoked. Well, if this, wasn't, if this wasn't on Netflix, I would totally go see this in the theater. Fair. It is on. It is a Netflix Netflix film. I wish they would release this to theater. So, man, I would go and see it in a theater, even though it was coming to Netflix. So you're saying, as if I cancel my Netflix subscription, I won't be able to see this. Correct. Damn it. Okay. Well, I guess well, I'm keeping well. my Netflix subscription then. Right. <laughs> okay. Nobody's excited about this nearly as much as I am. So let's. I'm wait. Just, excited for what are you it. Talking? But... I just. Okay, you. What the f- these other two were like, eh, ex- bully, that's <laughs> not nobody. That's still somebody. God damn it. You're right. But I'm you really would, you would talk like five minutes ago. I'm dollars a month for Netflix to, to watch this. How is that not exciting? The, 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 the downing is drowning out your excitement, John. That's what happened. All right. That's fair. Yeah. It's a movie we definitely do not need. You are somebody. We will take it. We do need it. Did you see Beverly Hills Cap 3? Everyone needs this movie. Everyone. Right. Everyone. Yeah. I've, I think maybe it's because I actually kind of liked Beverly Hills three because that's what? I worked at six. I worked at Six Flags. I don't care. I appreciated the theme park aspect to it, but there's no excuse for liking that movie. You should be ashamed of yourself. All right, I'm just John, and that's okay. <laughs> uh, my my next one, you know, I'm actually gonna uh, switch it because I'm gonna mention that I'll switch it to my honorable mentions. Um, my next one is gonna be Roadhouse which comes out on March 21st. I didn't realize it was coming out for sure this year, but I found out that, that is confirmed. Jake Gyllenhaal plays this generation's pain don't hurt hero. He's Elwood Dalton. So I'm assuming he's related to Swayze's James Dalton, uh, who transitions from a UFC fighter to a cooler in the Florida Keys. It's directed by Doug Lyman. He did the Born identity and a lot of other films. Uh, Mr. And Mrs. Smith. He, he makes fun action movies and everything I've read, the tracking for this has been off the charts and still prime won't release it in theaters because they want those streaming views, those clicks. So I can't wait to watch roadhouse on prime on March 21st. Is anybody else excited about this? I know it's a remake of a classic film, but it looks like they're taking a a new spin on it. It's Jake Gyllenhaal. How can you go wrong? That's what I'm saying. I mean, unless you're Taylor Swift, uh, throwback. Dang, wow. that was savage. That was uncalled for. That was honestly rude. We made it an hour. She left and her scarf, minutes. and oh my gosh, uh, I'm really looking forward to this one though. This is this is theatrical all the way. Well, not not really. It's gonna be streaming. You don't have a choice. Well, yeah, but you know what I'm saying. I Me, gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah. All right, Johnny, you're up. What are your? Well, I would. I will, I'll mention this one real quick. Horizon Chapter One comes out June 28th, and Chapter Two comes out August 16th. It's Kevin Costner's Ode to the American West. I don't know any more about it, but that whole concept. He's basically gave up Yellowstone for this franchise. So I hope it's very good, John. I hope he's he's a lot more engaging than he was at the Golden Globes. That that's for sure. Uh, yeah, he was weird. Okay, so no in part, no particular order to these. These are just four, uh, five movies that I'm excited about. One of them is Transformers 1, September 13th, 2024. An original story is set on Cybertron, home of both the Autobots and the Decepticons. The film is said to focus on the relationship between Optimus Prime and Megatron. The one and only thing I'm not really thrilled about when it comes to this movie is the fact that Optimus Prime is being voiced by Chris Hemsworth. But you also have 
John Hamm, Scarlett Johansson, Keegan Michael Key, Lawrence Fish, Fishburne, all these people are showing up to do some voices, and I'm excited for this for that reason. And I love Transformers. Uh, streaming for me. I won't watch that in the theater. It's animated, right? Okay. Yeah, it's animated. Yeah, it'd probably be streaming for me, too, at this point. I do love that it's going to be on Cybertron, though, so it could get me to get out there because I have an A-list membership. Okay. Right. Great. Moving right along to my next movie on Netflix, March 8th, 2020. We know what year it is. It's this year. <laughs> damsel, a dutiful damsel, agrees to marry a handsome prince, only to find out the royal family has recruited her as a sacrifice to repay an ancient debt. Thrown into a cave with a fire breathing dragon, she must rely on her wits to survive the stars. Millie Bobby Brown, Wet Ray Winstone, Angela Bassett. The list keeps going on of people that I don't know anything about, but those are the three that I thought was worth mentioning. How about you guys? What do you think? Does this seem like a medieval version of Ready or Not? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> I like that. And now I kind of want to see that movie. Make yeah. that movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would watch that. Uh, I want to see it. I, I don't know if that I'm excited about it, but I did like the trailer. Yeah, I like the trailer a lot. Okay. My next movie is Sonic the Hedgehog 3, December 20th. And the plot of this one's under wraps, but everyone is back for this movie. Uh, You have Idris Elba, James Marsden, Ben Schwartz, all these people that show up and do fun stuff. I really enjoy the first two movies. Um, I I like the video game. Um, It's one of my favorite video games as far as side scrollers are concerned. Uh, And it's partially because it's fast enough to keep my attention going for a long time uh but also the movies have been fun so uh I, and my I, I i watched them with my nephew and they were great watching it with him because he gets excited about the sort of stuff so uh anybody else teeth or no teeth coming back on this one <laughs> teeth uh, from the original design he's talking about the original yeah. design uh, we don't even know if Jim Carrey's coming back yet because he said he retired. So I don't know if he's actually going to be part of this or not. But he was a big reason why the first movie worked. I'm definitely saying streaming because I still haven't watched the second one. And I actually own it. Yeah, yeah that's same. Where, that's where I'm at because I haven't watched the second one yet. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. Uh, on June 14th, Bad Boys 4, plot still unknown. See, I think I made a lot of these choices just because it would keep me from reading way too many things. I should call but- it the slapping <laughs> The slapping. That's mm-hmm. great. Uh, so far, as as far as I can tell, the only people that they've confirmed that are back uh, are Mike Lowry and a couple of the idiots that worked for them uh, on in the last movie. I have no proof as to anybody else is coming back to this yet. Theatrical. I still am not a fan of Will Smith. I know some people are like, well, get over it. It's ridiculous. Nah, man. I just uh, really bugged me. The whole Oscar thing bugged me. Mm-hmm. Still does. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we'll see. I'm with you. But I love those movies, so I'll probably see it. Maybe that will be that'll finally win me over. Right. It probably will. Remember, there's just, there are a lot of more people that put their time and effort into making these things. It's not just Will Smith. I don't care. If, I, if I, the whole time I'm watching it, I want to slap him. I don't think that's really a a good <laughs> good way to spend two hours. But I'm sure, I'm Martin sure Lawrence thinks the same thing too. I like Martin Lawrence. <laughs> All right, I'm going to follow, finally come down to my last movie, which is Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse. I don't know how this didn't make it on the top 15 because it's not dated it is, yet. That's why. I got March 29th. Nope, they they pulled it from the schedule last year. All right. Well, anyhow, it picks up where the last movie left off. Everybody's coming back. I need to see this because I can't leave a story untold. What about you guys? If it comes out in 2024... I will definitely go see it. I really was not a fan of how they ended the last one. I would watch one more. That's probably the last one I'll watch because I'm good with this. I don't, I don't, but I also don't love animated movies. All right, cool. The first one was one of my favorite movies of the decade. The second one was a little bit more chaotic for me. And I can't say that I loved it. I enjoyed it still, but I just had a lot of issues with it. And we've already talked about the ending. So I'm going to see it, but it may end up being a streaming watch. All right. Well, I'm going to guess I'm going to go to the theater all by myself with all my movies then. We all know you're not going to the theater. No, I totally am. (laughs) 
I would watch it in the theater. I just don't know when because I doubt it's going to come out next this year. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's still coming out this year. I don't. I don't think. But it hasn't been dated, so it is possible. Uh, but because of the strikes, they had to push it off for for quite a while. So, mm-hmm. Amanda, you're the up. Voice actors. So that one's tentatively for 2024, but it was originally supposed to be in March. All right. So my list. Um, first up, we have Lisa Frankenstein, which is in theaters February 9th. <laughs> a misunderstood teenager. That? Oh, and a reanimated corpse embark on a murderous journey to find love, happiness, and a few missing body parts. How does this not sound like it's up my alley? Yeah. Lisa Frank, childhood artwork and all of that weird shit combined with love and joy and death. Okay? I'm in. Mm. Streaming. All right. At least you'll watch it. <laughs> no, yeah. It sounds interesting. I got it, man. I was like, I'll never watch in this the first trailer. And then I saw another trailer and I'm like, all right, I'm kind of. Doesn't it remind you a little bit of like warm bodies? Like I didn't well, think that I would enjoy that. Plot. It's the same yeah. exact plot. But I, Catherine Newton looks, I, yeah, theatrical. You won me. You got me. Okay. John? John? This one's streaming for me. All right. Well, my next is Madam Webb, which is in theaters February 14th. Cassandra Webb is a New York City paramedic who starts to show signs of clairvoyance. Forced to confront revelations about her past, she must protect three young women from a mysterious adversary who wants them dead. This hits the marks for me in terms of the casting, in terms of, you know, protecting women and a lead female, and also the mystery behind someone's past. Love that. I am very interested in this movie. I will likely see it in the theater. Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely theater. <laughs> it's theatrical, but this is not Madam Web. That's all I'm saying. That's, That's true. fair enough. That's, That's true. Enough. It's not Madam Web in, in any way, but you know. And also, if if anybody is uncertain, so we have Sydney Sweeney, we have Dakota Johnson, Emma Roberts, Adam Scott. Like we have a loaded cast, so I have a lot of faith in this being a good movie. And if you've seen the trailer, you'd expect Jennifer Garner as Electra to show up. Because <laughs> it feels like a 90s superhero movie. Yeah, or it 2000s, does a little. Whatever the hell that was. All right. My next one is called Drive Away Dolls, which is in theaters February 23rd from the Coen brothers. Oh, um, okay. Jamie regrets her breakup with her girlfriend while Miriam needs to relax. In search of a fresh start, they embark on an unexpected road trip to Tallahassee, but things quickly go awry when they cross paths with a group of inept criminals. A theatrical because the Coen brothers haven't made a movie together in a while and mm-hmm. I'm going to have to see that as soon as I can. I like that it's something different yet familiar so because of A-list I'll go with the theater. <laughs> That's a weird caveat. Well because I already paid for it I'm going to go see it. Um, I I think I'm going to go see, see this in the theater. It's uh, different and quirky enough that it will probably be very worth the sit. All right. Shirley comes out March 22nd. It is written and directed by John Ridley, um, who did 12 Years a Slave. Shirley depicts the 1972 presidential run of Shirley Chisholm, played by Regina King, who was the first black woman to be elected to U.S. Congress. It also has Lance Reddick and (gasps) Terrence Howard, who are along for the campaign. I didn't know about this movie. Theatrical. In. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Totally theatrical. Yeah. Theatrical. All right, my last movie is part one of Wicked, which comes out November 27th. In an alternate look at the land of Oz, the true heroine is wrongfully cast as the Wicked Witch and actually turns out to be a freedom fighter who battles against the wizard for her homeland. Part two will come out November 26th, 2025. (sighs) Reviews depend. It's review dependent. Mm. Because Mm. it should have been one movie. Mm-hmm. That's fair. I will totally give you that. Yep. The fact that you're splitting them up means I need to hear from people. I need to get some word of mouth. This is uh, something to get excited about. Okay. I'll get more excited about it when I see the trailer for it. I need to know if they sing in it first because I don't want to go to the movie and then all of a sudden they start singing and I didn't know they were singing in the first place. <laughs> is this a Mean Girls <laughs> reference? <laughs> <laughs> they, they better sing. It's an adaptation of the stage musical, it right? It better be. Yeah. They yeah. better sing. Which, by the way, is... 
I went and saw the stage play in Texas, uh, I don't know, probably three or four years ago, and I was blown away. It was so great. I finally understood all the hoorah and the hype around it. Okay. All right. You're getting me to come back to it a little bit. Mm -hmm, Interesting. mm -hmm. I do have an honorable mention. Go for it. Okay. So in theaters on Christmas, we have Nosferatu. Um, So another iteration of this, an ancient Transylvanian vampire stalks a haunted young woman in 19th century Germany. I will pretty much watch anything Nosferatu, um, going back to the OG. Mm -hmm. So I'm very excited for this one. That's a Christmas. That's Robert Eggers. That's Robert Eggers. He did The the Witch. Um, Yeah. That's... Lily Rolls Depths in that, Pete Skarsgård, or Bill Skarsgård, um, Nicholas Yeah, it's Holtz. got a great cast. Willem yeah. Dafoe is in it, too. That's interesting, because Will- Willem Dafoe played the character the last time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Robert Eggers can go either way. Uh, I will tentatively say theatrical. I love the idea of seeing it in a theater, but he can go either way. His the He also did The Lighthouse, which I loathed. So mm-hmm. yeah. he can go either way. Okay. Mm, for me, I'm gonna have to say streaming because I I I'm not as interested in this story as a lot of people are. So yeah, streaming for me. Streaming as well. Okay. Well, I've got a few honorable mentions. If you guys got a minute, you ready? I got one as well. Oh well, why don't you go first, Troy? I got a few. So. Uh, I'm gonna mention that Karate Kid did get moved into 2024, mm-hmm. and Ralph Macchio is attached to it. So mm. we're going to see Ralph Macchio and Jackie Chan reprising their roles as Daniel LaRusso and Mr. Han, which okay. means that this latest film and one of its actors will be bridging the gap between the original movies and the reboot. So how this plays in the Cobra Kai universe, so we're going to have to wait and see because don't know a bunch about this movie just yet. Yeah, we don't even know if Cobra Kai will be out before this. It's true. Yeah. Because there has to be one more season of Cobra Kai. Mm-hmm. And this is December 13th. You didn't say the date. It's December 13th, if you didn't know. Yes. I'm excited for that. I'm curious too. I like the mm-hmm. idea of Ralph Macchio and Jackie Chan teaming up. That, that's kind of a, a cool idea. Cool idea. Totally cash grab, but still a cool idea. Uh, John, did you have an honorable mention before I finish this out? I actually didn't. No. Okay. I, I, a lot of the stuff that I liked, uh, wanted to look at was already mentioned. Okay. So here's a few that I have. The Bike Riders. It was postponed from last year. It's directed by Jeff Nichols, stars Austin oh, yeah, Butler, yeah. Jody Comer, Tom Hardy, Michael Shannon, Boyd Hallbrook. Opens June 21st, 2024. After being pulled from the uh, 2023 release schedule because of the strike, this uh, period drama switched hands, and now it is definitely coming out. So inspired by the 1967 photo book of the same name, this fictional story chronicles the rise of a Chicago motorcycle club over the course of a decade through the lens of its members. Think of it like a a dated Sons of Anarchy to some degree. So a historical Sons of Anarchy. And um, this narrowly missed my list. Man. It's it looks good. Jody Comer, baby. Jody Comer. Mm-hmm. So what do you guys think? Streaming or theatrical? Is that more of a streamer for you guys? Because it's more of a low independent movie or theatrical, baby, all the way. What is happening to you right now? <laughs> <laughs> Troy. It's the line. John? It, uh, theatrical I, for me. Uh, theater for me. Okay. Uh, then I've got Wolves, which is September 20th, directed by John Watts, did the Spider-Man films. Stars George Clooney and Brad Pitt as two lone wolf fixers who are assigned to the same job. Theater. Streaming? Yeah. Yeah, you've got George Clooney, Brad Pitt. You've got, yeah, you've got a cast. I'm in. Okay. Uh, Craven the Hunter, directed by J.C. Chandor, starring... Aaron Taylor Johnson comes out August 30th, 2024. Uh, it was originally supposed to come out around the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man franchise, but that got bumped. So now we're getting this character from the Spider-Man universe. He's basically going the Venom route where he gets his own series. It's not your father's Craven the Hunter, that's for sure, because this is basically the son of Craven. He becomes Craven. I don't know exactly what the hell is going on, but Craven the Hunter in the Spider-Man comics is basically this guy who's obsessed with hunting. And he will do anything to capture his prey. And he ends up hunting Spider-Man a lot. I don't know if there's going to be any Spider-Man mentions here. But uh, I think it's probably going to be possibly terrible. But I can't wait to see it because Craven the Hunter is one of my favorite Spider-Man villains. 
I'm leaning towards streaming for this one. Mm. Um, I'm at least willing to watch it and that mostly because I don't know, you know, the historical piece of it. But it does have Aaron Taylor Johnson. It has Ariana DeBose from yeah. um, Wish and Hamilton and uh, West Side Story, of course. So that makes me more intrigued into it. And I'll stay open minded. But trailer wise, it looks it looks OK. It looks fine. I'm going to say streaming for this one. I'm not as excited about this character. Um I I would have to like the trailer doesn't do anything for me. So unless unless I see something or Aaron starts telling me it's the best Spider-Man side story ever told. Happen. That's probably not going to happen. I saw the trailer. Need, it's probably not going to happen. Well, at least I'm giving you the opportunity to talk me into going to see it in <laughs> sure. the theater. That's all I'm saying. Sure. Yeah. Mine is Aaron review dependent. That's very nice. Ooh. We, when, we, when I finished talking. <laughs> Aaron, 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 Aaron is like the Spider-Man aficionado. So if Aaron likes it then it's worth going to see because mm-hmm. I feel like I feel like I'm kind of seeing this already in something that I'm currently already immersed in spider wise. And <laughs> I don't know if I need to see the movie that I just finished already seeing It's better there. I'm sure. <laughs> so, but so far, so far it's really good. in what I'm currently seeing. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. And if anybody's a gamer, you know what he's talking about. Uh, all right. Terrifier three <laughs> comes out on October 25th, 2024. We don't know much about the third installment except it centers around Christmas and David Howard Thornton is returning to play Art the Clown. Uh, Terrifier 2 kind of took the horror world by surprise. It came out like it was a sequel to a barely present uh, horror film. It was basically just a bargain basement indie cult th- thriller. Uh, gory, murdery kind of film. And it did great business. And so they're making a third one. And I really, really, I didn't love the second one but man i i couldn't turn it off and i love the concept of art the clown so i keep waiting for them to nail it don't know if he's going to nail it with this third one but I, i'm going to watch it i'm i'm going to i'm going to watch this in the theater too i i still haven't seen the first two i own them both but i haven't given myself a chance to sit down and watch them yet but i'm excited to do so then how do you know you'd want to see it in the theater because, you know <laughs> he's what? willing to i am I, I'm, I'm willing to bet you buy the third one and still don't go see the first two that is also a possibility, but I was looking to the positive on this and trying to be hopeful for something to be so scary or even so okay. crappy. It's worse to see. Fair. Why are you shitting on me? I'm not. I'm not at all. I didn't care for the first one. Haven't watched the second one. So the chances that I'll even watch the third one are probably pretty slim. Fair. Um, We'll see. We'll see how I'm feeling around that time. I'll make sure to let my daughter know she loves them. okay ordinary angels this is based on a true story ordinary ordinary angels uh centers on sharon steves played by hillary swank who's this struggling hairdresser in a small kentucky town who finds uh, a renewed sense of purpose when she meets ed schmidt played by reacher's alan richson who's playing against his uh, reacher type here as a widower working hard to make ends meet for his two daughters and his youngest daughter is waiting for a liver transplant so it's this uplifting film uh, full of faith and everyday miracles and ordinary angels. And uh, man, it comes out on February 23rd wide. They delayed it so it could get a proper release. And I just love the trailer. It's not just because it's Alan Richson. I know people are going to say that, but I the trailer really got me in the feels. Streaming for me. It'll probably be streaming for me. I'm willing to go see it in the theater, but again, it's going to going to the theater at this point in my life requires a lot of adjustment and like trying to get into the theater and energy. So, I it has to be really good. I mean, be really interested for me to go to the theater at this point, um unfortunately. What like you, you got to put pants on? Cuz I do have to put pants on. Yes. I'm also just usually really tired when I get to my off days. Um, Because of all the commuting and stuff, the driving. Mm -hmm, So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but Hillary Swank, I have, I I used to not like her, which is kind of crazy. I used to be like, oh, she's so overrated. But I've gotten an appreciation for her as I've gotten older. Um, And Alan Richson, I think, is fantastic. I'll be curious to see this. It looks like it'll be a sweet little lifetime type movie. I don't know how she's overrated. I think the world looks at her as the most overrated two-time Oscar winner in history or something. And yeah, I don't get it. She's great. So I, 
yeah, I don't I don't know where it really came from for me either. I think it was just because I was saturated with her movies when I was like younger. You know what I mean? Sure. So I think maybe that had a role to play in it. But then as I actually, you know, as I got older and I started watching different things that she's in, I really, really started to appreciate her as an actress. So now it's to the point where I'm like, I'm willing to watch this because of her more than anything. Okay. Johnny? I'm going to say streaming just because uh, this is like, I, if I'm going to go through theater, it's going to be for something that's going to, you know, uh, just fuck my eye holes with awesome. And this doesn't sound like it's going to be that. Okay. All right, Your well, eye holes are going to be fucked with tears. Right. I don't need that. <laughs> I I don't need the tears. I don't, I don't want that. I want awesome. So. Okay. Well, here's awesome. Abigail, April 19th. After, have you seen, has everybody seen the trailer for Abigail yet? No. No. Oh my God. You guys. I have. This. It's so fantastic. Uh-huh. After a group of criminals kidnapped the ballerina daughter, of a powerful underworld figure. They retreat to an isolated mansion, unaware that they're locked inside with no normal little girl. In fact, it's possible it's Dracula's goddamn daughter. It's amazing. This is very, Sold. very fucking twisted. Uh, it's <laughs> directed by uh, the Radio Silence, who did the, the Scream films, and Ready or Not. They did Ready or Not. Stars Melissa Barrera from the Scream Films, Catherine Newton, Angus Cloud, Kevin Durant, Dan Stevens. Yes! And when you watch the trailer, everybody here, when you're done listening to this podcast, go watch the trailer for Abigail. This is going to be one of those films that comes out of nowhere. It's got a From Dust Till Dawn vibe. Oh, I am so goddamn sold on this. I am going to go see this right now. So good. Right now. Man, am I underselling it, overselling it? What? No, I think you're totally selling it at the right level. It looks awesome. Okay. Yeah, I'm in from your explanation, all the people involved, all the backstory of other stuff that I've loved in that entire explanation. I'm totally in. All right. I'll be quick because I know Troy has to use the restroom. Mufasa, The Lion King, uh, Barry Jenkins, they're doing a sequel December 20th, 2024. This is a live action Lion King se- uh, prequel that's going to explore the backstory of Simba's father, Mufasa. Uh, James Earl Jones, who voiced Mufasa in the original Lion King and the remake, will not voice this younger version. Instead, Aaron Pierre will, uh, or Pierre, I'm not sure exactly how you say it, and Ke- Kelvin Harrison Jr. will play ways. Scar. What? I've heard it both ways. Okay. Uh, yeah, so he'll play Scar, and I have it on here because I think families are going to want to see this. I don't know that I will, but what do you guys think? <laughs> I will probably see it in the theater. I, I like the original remake, the live action remake. The live action remake works because it's almost shot for shot the same, right? Story beat wise. So this is probably one of these like nobody really needs. It could turn out to be completely fantastic in its own thing. Like I really enjoyed Monsters University. Didn't think I needed it. Totally loved it and enjoyed it. So uh, I have Disney Plus still for another year. So I'll probably wait for it on streaming. Yeah, this would be a streaming one for me, too. Uh-huh. Um, when I hear musical, though, I'm wondering if it's going to be like Disney integrating music or if this is going to be all out musical. Um, it, it could be hit or miss for me, depending on that. I think it would be like classic 90s Disney, right? M- Mermaid, That's what I'm Lion hoping King. for. Yeah. 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 But if it's like movie musical. uh mm. I, Barry uh, Jenkins is a great director, so I will. I will. Get he it. is. He is for sure, which gives more credibility to this property for sure. But am I going to run to the theater for it? Probably not. There's an entire zebra kick line. I'm sure. <laughs> okay. How about this for a last one? This is my last one. I promise. November fifteenth, red one. Dwayne Johnson, Chris Evans, J.K. Simmons is a jacked Santa. And it's, yes. directed, it's directed by Jake Kasdan, who helmed the new Jumanji movies. And the only description we have, an Instagram post from, from uh, Dwayne Johnson, described the movie as, quote, a big, fun, action-packed, and fresh new take on Christmas that is a mashup of Jumanji meets Miracle on 34th Street meets Hobbs and Shaw with a dash of Harry Potter and sprinkled on top with my all-time favorite Christmas movie, It's a Wonderful Life. That fucker knows how to sell. Yep. I'm in. Keyword galore. <laughs> that that was he just put a whole bunch of stuff in the chat GPT to get that out. I hope so. Whatever works. <laughs> They're like how to sell Aaron chat GPT. <laughs> it did it. It all did it. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I'll check that out for sure. Yeah, and you can see it in the theater because Prime's going to put it in the theater first. Yep. Boop, 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 boop. Love that. And Chris Evans and J.K. Simmons and The Dude. Rock. Uh, Dude. This is going to be great. Or yeah. awful, but still yeah. wonderful time. Can be either way. It'll, Thanks. it'll, regardless, it'll still be entertaining because of the cast. Sure. Absolutely. Even if the movie sucks, right? Absolutely. We got to go. We've talked for too long. Anything you want to say about 2024 movies before we close this bitch out? Come back next week, of course, for a new episode that'll be much shorter. I promise you. What do you got to say? I don't think I've been this excited for a year to be of movies in a long time. A good mix of new, maybe a little bit less in the way of comic book stuff. So uh, I'm, and I don't believe I'm saying that. So I'm sorry to all the other people who are like, <gasps> I, I know, but uh, I'm excited for this, this, this lineup. Yeah. I mean, you need to go to two movies after noon in order to pay back your AMC A-list subscription or other theater oh my God. subscription. So this for is the God year. Sakes, if you haven't if... done it yet, buy one because there's so much good coming out in 2024. You're going to be at the theater at least twice a month. But don't say it like uh, it's a business transaction. <laughs> like you it's go, an obligation. You got to go see 2.5 movies to make this thing worth it. There's plenty coming out to enjoy. People, keep, right? Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff coming out. That's I'm saying, so I'm saying, you're already going to be there at least two times a month. Sure, you okay. might as well get the get the thing. I'm with you. I'm with you. I just hope I have enough time to watch all the stuff because there's a lot of good stuff coming out. I That's just want always to the prioritize seeing it. Yeah, for sure. Because mm. there's also a lot of good TV coming out this year too. Okay, so. Amanda, Don't be afraid to go to a movie at 10 o'clock on Saturday or Sunday morning. We just want to see you leave show up here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, and, yeah. And leave the house at some. Yes, can we, both can we at least acknowledge so far in 2024? I've been good. I've been good. You've made it. Tw- you've made it for two episodes in a row. We're very proud. Of you. You're mm-hmm. going to be gone next right. week, though. So. I will. But that was that is pre planned. Lies. That was pre acknowledged because I'm this. traveling. We can't do it. No, nope, we can't live with this lies. <laughs> can't do it you sit on a throne of lies uh, i just smell kidding. like beer and cheese <laughs> all right i'm gonna go i'm gonna go watch those old godzilla movies and throw up remember the next time you head to a theater How or stream comfortably you? on your couch buy popcorn r.i.p aaron <laughs> sorry don't kill me 